Sponsored by the Mike Morris Law Firm, 855 Mike Wins. Jason Carr Live starts now. Plugging in just in the nick of time. How are you this morning on a Monday? Live from downtown Detroit, inside the WDIV Local 4 Quick on Detroit compound. Uh, about 43 minutes away from top of the hour, live in the D on the TV. Jason Carr, good to see you. We have uh, Jacob and John back here. Jake's in the red hat, assisting John. And we are off to an alternative, factual live stream today. Yes, alternative facts. Yeah, well, here's an alternative fact. Did you know that butter steak can prolong your life by 25 years? 25? Yeah, I heard it was take... 30. <laughs> let's take a look. This from the files of my own kitchen. That is my cast iron skillet, my steak, and my entire stick of butter. This is butter steak porn. This looks amazing. This went have? bonkers on my Facebook page, at Jason Carr TV on Facebook. Oh, it. there's your natural sound for the sizzle. Yeah. What are you getting? Just salt and pepper. That's the secret ingredient. And I didn't even feel the need to use accent, you know, MSG. Uh -huh. I just went with traditional sea salt and pepper and butter. Yeah. How'd it come out? Oh, are you kidding? <laughs> Look at that. Fantastic. Whew. Make you hungry? Yeah. Jacob, yeah. how you doing back there? Are you starving yet? When's the last time you had a butter, butter steak? Never? I don't know. I, I An entire stick of butter. I think it's fantastic myself. Um, dog jumping. Can we see the dog jumping video? This speaks for itself. There's a dog on the other side of the baby oh gate, and he does that. <laughs> <laughs> Quite acrobatic. Can Amazing. we see it again? Let's, yeah, let's, let's take another look. Come on, girl. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> how the dog doesn't just wipe, one more time, how the dog just doesn't wipe out is beyond me. That's a good three feet he's clearing. Yeah. You know what he's trying to get. What is he trying to get? The butter steak. The, bu yeah, the dog is trying to get the butter steak. That yeah. Looks nothing like my kitchen, but for the purposes of this narrative, the dog was trying to get to the butter steak. Um, SNL, can we, uh, we have Beck Bennett yeah. shirtless. I pulled a little bit of it. Let's uh, let's take a look That's at Putin. that. <gasps> My pension. <laughs> now, do I think your new president is perfect? Perhaps not. But don't worry, I'll get him there. Donald, let's talk his friends. You're not off to a great start, man. I thought you'd be better at this. However, I'm glad to see so many people showed up to your inauguration. Oh, wait, that's the Women's March. Here is inauguration. And, and today you went to the CIA and said one million people came to see you in Washington, D.C.? If you're going to lie, don't make it so obvious. You know, say you are friends with LeBron James, not that you are LeBron James. <laughs> and I saw your speech, too. It was a little bleak, no? Mm. Trust me, I know bleak. I wake up every day and I'm in Russia. <laughs> also, you... Beck Bennett is, uh, that's a top note. Yeah. I mean, that's up there with Alex, ba Alex. Alec Baldwin's Who Donald wasn't Trump. there this week? Everyone was kind of expecting yeah. him to be there, but... I don't know. Shirtless Putin. Yeah. It's Amazing. like a, a punk band. <laughs> a ska. That's yeah. a ska band. <laughs> Coming soon to a club near you, the ska band Shirtless, Shirtless Putin. Putin. Um, uh, turning to matters more serious, millions of coastal residents along the eastern seaboard are facing uh, potentially, potentially disastrous storms. Um, Seven million people remain under tornado watches uh, in South Florida. Already there's been twisters that killed 18 people. They, we have some video from Sam Roback. Um, preliminary damage uh, assessments conducted in Mississippi showed a tornado pack winds reaching 165 miles per hour. In Alabama, 15 counties reported storm-related damage. So uh, thoughts and prayers going out to those in the south as this wild weather ride that we've been on for seemingly multiple years now continues. Um, it's very strange. Uh, back up this way. 
that we have the weather uh, that we do. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not really tornado season, you'd think, but uh, I've got some photos here, that are just really powerful stuff. Uh, mm, shows mm, just mm. really a lot of the damage. Now, this one here, I think, is just amazing. With like the, the, there's no roof to the house, but she's going to get her boots to go outside. She, it's just, she is, oh no, she's got flats on. I thought she was yeah. barefoot there for a second. But it's, it's just, it's so sad. Church steeple, sort of on an angle. So, yeah. Nature's are, wrath is nothing to mess with. Mm -hmm. mm. Well. Uh, asleep at the wheel. In Lake Orion, a police officer there crashed into the side of a house after falling asleep while driving early Saturday morning. The crash happened on East Flint Street near Washington in Lake Orion. Uh, police telling us the 24-year-old veteran officer was traveling when he lost control of his vehicle and ran into the house. The officer checked on the residents inside, a husband and wife, and their one-year-old, all three uninjured. He was treated, the officer was, for minor injuries. Um, he hit the side of the house closest to the child's room. Yeah. And I, I believe if I read correctly on click on, he's distraught, you know, the matter's under investigation. Apologetic, he's cooperating with investigators. Fell asleep behind the wheel? Yeah. yeah. 24 year veteran of the force. So uh, thank goodness the family was not harmed, the officer was not harmed, the child was not harmed. Um, just a sobering reminder that, um, you know, driving while drowsy or, uh, you know. It's serious. It's serious. It's, it's, all, it's, it's almost more serious than uh, being being under the influence. It's just as ex as serious. Okay, Patrick Jones of Buzz Sixty did a on the street piece about anti catcalling signs that popped up around New York, and he found this guy, and it is quite amazing. So let's take a quick look at that. You know, clip. sometimes you know you got to call a girl. You got yo, you know, you know, something like that. How would you call a dog? Same way. So how do you think catcalling makes the person feel? It feels good, like, watch, let's see if we see a nice girl. So can you find a nice girl that I'm, that I'm attracted to? Here? But Dating. Yeah, dating. Oh my God. You know, even if it's far away, it's even better, because they're not that scared. You know, so you gotta have a little distance. I do a lot of sweethearts. Okay. Does that work? I don't know. You tell me. Yeah, I've never done that. I've literally not once has that even occurred to me to do. Wait a second. <laughs> Are you reporting is that girls don't like this? They don't like catcalling. Daddy, I don't. I, I, come on. We're just acknowledging that you did a good thing today getting up out of bed. Oh, sweetheart. <laughs> is this guy for real? <laughs> Yo. Didn't this realize that this was what the report was Another about. day ruined. <laughs> he said another day ruined. Yeah, it's, it's just <laughs> terrible. <laughs> oh, that so, guy. I mean, I, it's, we don't really have the type of city that's for that. There isn't as much pedestrian traffic, so I don't see a whole lot of cat calling out on the streets of Detroit. Um, but in New York, apparently, it's a really big issue. I have never once, I was going to say in 46 years, which would have implied as a toddler I was cat calling. Yeah, <laughs> But in my entire life, let's put it that way, I have never once cat called a girl that I can recall. It's definitely not like that. Like, <laughs> sounds like he's calling a squirrel. Um, Tom Brady might have a whole gaggle of squirrels underneath his epic winter coat, but you wouldn't know it because the thing is like on him, like stink on you know what. Let's take a look. <laughs> It's his, this is his Herman Munster look, is what this is. And, and the, the memes that are coming out, I mean, we remember this coat. <laughs> we got him in a, in a hot air balloon. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. my goodness. <laughs> that, wasn't that like a weight loss thing? The, the Was laughing? it for the steaming or something? something yeah. Like that. I, it, it, Look like, like your self steamer. Sneaking a couple kids into the movies. I mean, just, just insane. And, and did we ever figure out what this coat is all about? I don't know. I think it's just a big coat to keep them warm, and the wind was blowing, and it just made it look huge. Like it's even with shoulder pads, that's so obnoxious. Yeah, he he does have the pretty woman shoulder pads going on there, like Julia Roberts Ooh, from nineteen ninety. What size coat is that? How many people could you that's fit in there? Triple XL. You could probably hide a field goal kicker or two inside the coat with him. Um, can we go back to the butter steak? Yeah, let's take another look at that. In case you're just now joining us here on uh, the 9.15-ish, Jason Carr Live. Um, 
Dateline My Kitchen last Thursday night, approximately 6 o'clock p.m. That is a steak with sea salt, liberally salted with sea salt and pepper, and an entire stick of butter. Sizzling. I shot that with my phone. It looks good. Now you finished that yourself? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> wow. wow. Now, did you see Aziz do the whole Owen Wilson bit on SNL? What's that? Uh, Aziz Azari. He was on SNL. Did he do that? Wow. They, they, where he's in bed with a woman and the woman's doing her Owen Wilson voice. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh. Mmm, butter steak, says Roberta. Uh, that is a lot of butter, says Will Muhammad. You got it. Oh my, uh, Kari says, I die if I eat. That's not safe for work, says Ryan. What the bleep, says Sharon, regarding Tom Brady's coat. Mm. So yeah, people are inspired by the butter steak or perhaps by the word porn coming after about butter steak. It's one or the other. Napping sea, sea lion. Sometimes you just need to take a little nappy poo. Melanie Hill happened across an odd scene on Saturday in Freeland, Washington. What is that? Um, yeah, he decided a roof of a car was the perfect place to take a nap. That's the weirdest thing. Why would he even do that, she said. You got to feel for the owner of this car who's coming back to go and just can't get in. Do you approach the sea lion? Do you have to, I don't know, how do you get rid of it? <laughs> I don't know, they said a couple of officers came and moved it. I'm like, how do you move a sea lion? I don't know. I like how <laughs> it's just going to go back to sleep. <laughs> you have a funny looking face. That's so funny. The, basically the only characters in Finding Dory that I liked yeah. were the sea lions on the rock and the one that they didn't want anybody on the rock with them well it's a good thing that wasn't a convertible you know <laughs> then it'd be an issue you come back and there's a sea lion literally in your car <laughs> uh m night Shyamalan. it's been 13 years and seven directing gigs since uh he opened at the top of the box office split broke that drought over the weekend if you don't know this movie it is uh everybody's talking about it because james mcavoy there on the left he plays a somebody who you know, uh, abducts, um, what, what is her name? I can't remember. Uh, he, he abducts a woman in this movie, and it turns out that he has multiple personalities. Okay. And those personalities are capable of pretending to be each other. Okay. So it's like layer upon layer kind of, and of course, being M. Night Shyamalan, there's, There's a, a twist, twist. Oh, okay. but it's apparently it's very satisfying. It's, uh, from whatever I've heard, everything I've heard, it's his best outing since like Signs, Unbreakable, mm -hmm. The Sixth Sense. It's a return to form. Yeah. But I would say that his movie last year, The Visit, about the grandparents hosting their grandkids. I didn't see it. Any good? You haven't seen The no, Visit? No, I guess not. Oh, you are in for a total mind okay. blank yeah. because you're not going to see what's coming in that movie. But uh, yeah, Split is um, basically top of the box office. And on the heels of that, he is already saying that Unbreakable, the Bruce Willis, Sam Jackson movie, yeah, there's going to be a sequel. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, maybe. Did you like Unbreakable? It was all right. It wasn't, yeah. It was okay. I was really taken with it when it came out. I gave it four stars. I haven't seen... Bruce Willis plays a dude who may or may not be a superhero. And Sam Jackson figures in there um, as well. Sam Jackson didn't like every movie. So. Well, Sam Jackson's like the all-time box office champ, or I think somebody just displaced him. He was number one for a long time, and somebody reclaimed, maybe Tom Cruise, somebody reclaimed it from him. Here's a thawing video from YouTube. Uh, this is a channel on YouTube called Stereo Chroma, with a K. Seven plus minutes of different vegetables and fruits doing exactly this, thawing with sound. Yes, here we go. You're gonna kill our mics? And...
So yeah, pretty pretty cool stuff. Pretty neat. Rich and compelling. It, mm -hmm. it literally had no effect on a spike of our uh, <laughs> live audience, people that are watching us right now. They're like, what are we supposed to be watching here? Is this, is this melting fruit and vegetables? Now, I have something that we need to check in on. I've promised that as long as this camera's up, we will check in on the eagles. And it looks like they're doing pretty well. It's getting really big. Well, that egg is still there. Uh, it's not going to hatch. You wonder what if you they... Say it's called the Eagle Promise? Mm-hmm. That's, that's John Steckroth's Eagle Promise to, the, uh, to my viewers. Is that gonna, anything as like, this is up. like Scout's Honor? Yes. This is an this Eagle is Promise? This is the Eagle Promise. Oh, wait, did you say that's John Steck's, that that's your promise to the viewers? Yes, we're going to constantly be checking in on these eagles as long as this camera's up. Thank you, Dick Pritchett Real Estate, for keeping this camera going. Uh, but it's, it's really incredible. Big baby. Mm-hmm. All right, so a um, uh, 109-year-old woman from Illinois says bacon is one of the keys to living a long life. Ruth Benjamin also helped her case by never smoking or drinking at all, but she says that bacon, there she is. God bless you, Ruth. So is it true? There isn't any kind of documented correlation between bacon and longevity. High-quality bacon is jam-packed with something called choline, which has been shown to fight off Alzheimer's. Um, bacon also boasts B vitamins and zinc, which boosts the production of serotonin. It worked for her. 109. 109. 109. Loves her some bacon. But I wonder if she's ever had a butter steak. Uh, you got to imagine she's had one, right? She loves bacon, probably. Yeah. Can we see the butter steak? Yeah, we've been taking a look. Again, this was what I had for dinner last Thursday night. In all of its glory. You can see this on my Facebook page, by the way, as apparently many people have. I don't think I've posted something that went this accidentally viral in a long time. <clears throat> I think the last thing on my page that re reached this many people, there was a Cadillac involved. Yeah, yeah. Hear that? That's the uh, skillet. Mm -hmm. Cooling off in the background. And oh, what the heck? Let's uh, let's revisit the dog jumping the fence because who doesn't love dogs jumping fences? Come on, girl. <laughs> real? Was it real? Can I you think play that, that in slow mo? Video. Come on, girl. Uh, Are you able to play that in slow mo? <laughs> no, I don't have that capability. I well, hold on. Maybe. <laughs> We're on the cutting edge here. Look at oh, this. There look you at go. me go. Look. Look wow. at the ups. Right there. Full extension and then somehow recovers. It's a, it's a, yeah, you know, I, the Swedish judge gave him a nine, so he didn't. Can we see it again? Come on, girl. Now, what happened if, if the dog hurt itself doing that? It is a tile floor. It's, it's, and it's a tough jump. It looked like it's three and a half feet or something. I, Impressive. Yeah. What are the people saying on the Facebook? Uh, let's see. They want to go back to the butter steak. More butter steak. Actually, I'm seeing a lot more about the butter steak. So we'll look at the I've Facebook I've never had a butter steak until last month when my husband made it, that. says Helen. Diane yeah. says the landing was off on the dog. Cook it well or medium? Come on, Sharon. It's got to be rare or medium no. rare. If you're going to cook it well, have chicken. Somebody says the dog is real. That was me looming over the pan, mm -hmm. drawing the curtain back on. Uh, well, here let's let's look at it one more time because <laughs> I, I need to I need to uh, demonstrate coming out of this just how I shot this. Nobody's inquired as to what kind of meat that was. 
Well, what is it? I don't know. Oh. I bought it on sale. I think it was a T-bone. I'm not oh, sure. Right. <laughs> Pretty sure it was a T-bone. And by the way, that salted butter, that salted good old Land of Lake, so like butter, 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 not like unsalted butter. Well, or when you're cooking, you're supposed to use unsalted. That way you can control the amount of salt you're putting into everything. Did you see how much sea salt I put on this yeah, thing? It's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> Looks like it turned out all right, though. It did indeed. Um, do you still have a uh, video of the dancing dog? The dancing dog? Oh, you know what? Never mind. No, I don't. You don't have the dancing dog? The one that was uh, dancing because he was I did, but sold? I'd have to re-upload it for some... Yeah, but yeah. What were you going to ask? Uh, about Beck Bennett as Putin. Did that leave off? Did we bail on that? And is it in the same spot, or does it start completely over? Uh, it starts completely over. Ah. Yeah. I know. Oh, well. Know. Can't win them all. You can try. You can try. Um, bowl of bacon today. The question I'm asking uh, Bacon Nation, which means you, Local 4 Nation, if you go to my Facebook uh, fan page at Jason Carr TV, uh, the pe uh, bowl of bacon question for today is, if you could return to one year from your childhood, which you especially treasure for being the hype of both fun and this is relatively appropriate independence given your age. What age would you return to and why to sort of relive, you know, because when you're a kid, you're innocent, you don't know the world's kind of a mean place that can can be really sucky. Um, so what would what year would you go back to? 17. 17, really? 17, yeah. So 10 years ago, 11 yeah. years ago. Yeah, with the car. I had a I had a 94 Escort with a racing stripe painted on the side, and uh, it was a stick shift. And it, yeah, it was fantastic. I love that car. Jacob? I'd probably go back to high school, like junior year. So yeah. Like, what, 16, 17? Yeah. Like, just uh, after I got my car. you got to be able to drive. I don't want to go back to a time where I have to be like, picked up and driven everywhere. What would you tell us in the comments, either on my page or right here uh, on the Local 4 Facebook page, what would you choose? Me, I would go back to like summer of 82. Actually like right in that like 11 to 12 and a little bit beyond, like 82 okay. right in there. Cause that, I mean, 82 is the greatest movie or greatest year movie in movie year. history. Yeah. So there's that. And then, you know, it just was a great summer, like baseball and little league and uh, just, best friend, love being in Plymouth, love growing up in West Briar Village, uh, having a park in the middle of the neighborhood, just really awesome time. Had the goody comb in the back pocket, whip oh, out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the Fonz. Like the Fonz, that's, hey. that's right. Anybody that went to Isbister and then later Pioneer and probably Salem as well remembers the goody comb in the back pocket. Remember this? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, constantly. <laughs> oh boy. Neighbor. Somebody said neighbor. I wonder who that is. Let me see. Sharon Finn Amy says neighbor. She must have been from that era or that locality. It's going to do it for today. I got to get ready to go do Live in the D with Chuck and Tati. We'll see you on the TV. Stay classy, Detroit. Jason Carr Live is sponsored by the Mike Morris Law Firm, 855 Mike Wins.